Oops, actually, let's back up for a second. Uh, I forgot. Ah, the search of the true prophet. This is another gift for Wynn. Um, and uh, the description here is actually kind of interesting. It's a book about Andraste. But uh, instead of treating her as a religious figure, it explores the possibility that she was actually one of the most powerful uh, mages ever to exist uh, on Thetis. And that's how she came to do all the great things that she did, and why even now uh, she's worshipped as divine. Oh, marvelous! Okay, and now for Morgan, we will give a silver chain. A fine gift. You have my thanks. And the plot item, the Black Grimoire. What? You found Flemeth's Grimoire? Ever since we discovered the condition of the Mage's Tower, I had wondered if it might be recoverable. But I had yet to speak of it to you. How fortunate that you found it on your own. You have my thanks. I will begin study of the tome immediately. What do you hope to find within it? Secrets. My mother has many of them, and this tome represents the one time that they were able to get away from her. I do not intend to squander this opportunity to learn more than Flemeth wished me to know. This should be... interesting. All right, just a huge amount of approval across the board. So why did you keep your birthright a secret? You never asked? <laughs> That's a cheap answer. Ah, <sighs> all right. If you want the full explanation, I'll give it to you. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then, after the battle, when I should have told you... I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? <laughs> I guess I can understand that. I... I should have told you, anyway. It was important for you to know. I guess part of me liked you not knowing. Why? What happens when people find out, usually? They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them, instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it, and I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Well, that doesn't actually sound very stupid at all. For all the good it does me, my blood seems certain to haunt me no matter what I do. I guess I should be thankful that Arl Eamon is far more likely to inherit the throne. If he's all right. Oh, I hope he's all right. And for what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. It was a dumb thing to do. Don't worry about it, Alistair. In the end, I don't think there was any harm done. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. Are you feeling better now? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do. Well, thank you for your kindness, my dear. It certainly warms these rickety old bones. What's on your mind? I was just thinking about being a Grey Warden. Hmm. Is something troubling you? Sometimes I wish I could go back to my old life in the Circle. A Grey Warden should put aside the person that he used to be. It has shaped the person that he is, but he has become something greater. Grey Wardens have no titles. They owe no allegiance to a king or lord. They cannot serve one people. They must serve them all and protect them all. You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. 
Well, I don't tend to give up easily. And that gives me hope. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? I know they soar through the skies on griffins. Griffins? <laughs> Alas, that seems to be the only thing people remember from the tales. The mighty flying mounts that bore the Grey Wardens into battle. Well, I, I wish I had a griffin. Unfortunately, they've all passed back into the Maker's hand. <laughs> so that wish will have to go unfulfilled. It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Does the story have griffins in it? Maker's mercy, it's like talking to a child. So does it have griffins in it or not? Yes, there are griffins in this story. Yay. The blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums and stood before the armies of men. Griffins? Yes, Griffins. Now listen to the rest of the story. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the Archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice. The Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. So, when did this tale happen? This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Wardens past, and now it shall be your blessing and your burden. <laughs> yeah, Vexus is a little obsessed about griffins, but I couldn't help it. I do like griffins. What's on your mind? As a Grey Warden, I'll never lead a normal life, will I? No, you won't. Well, that was rather blunt. Were you expecting an, oh, I'm sure you will? You'll have dozens of babies and die happy and old in your bed. No, you won't. If I had said that, it would have been a lie, and I would have been doing you an injustice. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. Maybe a little. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. And this upset you? It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, Maybe answers. Did you find anything? I must have looked tearful or made some noise because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things. But she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason. 
and fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. <laughs> 